We're at Taunton. There's a church behind us. What's the name of the church behind us, Sid? Uh, St Churches? The patron saint of churches. Anyway, it's the church that overlooks the ground. We have arrived and it's a test. It's a test, Sid. I'm quite excited. Are you excited? Yeah, definitely. We don't get these come along very often, as we all know. Um, and it feels like it's been an awfully long time ago that we were at Canterbury for the last Women's Ashes test. Um, we haven't been lucky enough to be at any since. Um, and yeah, really looking forward to the next few days, hoping the weather holds up. It's, it's really cloudy today um, and there's definitely supposed to be some rain around for you know, much of the weekend. But I still think that there'll hopefully be enough play to get a game in. Okay. Yeah, so super exciting for us. I guess super exciting for the players as well because they don't get to they don't get to play it very often. And we've just been chatting um, in the press conferences to to the two captains, to Meg Lanning and and Heather Knight, and they both seemed quite excited, didn't they? Yeah, everyone's definitely raring to go. Um, you know, the, there was big smiles on on the faces of all the England players. They just did a, a little photo shoot with their whites on, and they were obviously you know completely delighted to be there. Absolutely. Okay. Um, on the flip side of that, obviously we've got two two squads of players here, and some of them are going to miss out on participating in this match, um, which which will obviously be be quite disappointing. Um, so let's let's start with England. Um, who do we think is going to kind of be be coming into the team, and who and who might miss out? Well, we know that England really need to attack in in this Test match. Um, so you know, I think that they're going to go with the attacking bowling of Kirsty Gordon. Mm. Um, and I think that Laura Marsh will probably uh, miss out because of that. And I think that on the batting side, Lauren Winford will probably be the one to miss out for England. What about Australia, Raf? What do you think? Who, who do you think is going to miss out for Australia? Who is going to play? Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. They've obviously brought uh, Sophie Molyneux into the into the squad, um, who didn't play in the ODIs. Um, I guess she probably would have been in their in their first cho first choice eleven, but um, she's kind of been coming back from this injury, hasn't she? So um, she's kind of worked her way back in, and they obviously feel confident um, that she's back to full fitness. So I think she's she's very likely to play, especially as um, we think that the the pitch is gonna is gonna spin. Um, it's going to be conducive to spin. Uh, so um, yeah, um, in terms of um, Australia's other lineup, I think it's probably going to be broadly similar to the ODIs. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think they're going to keep a very similar batting lineup. Certainly, I, I, I strongly suspect that Nicole Bolton keeps her place. I'd be very, very surprised if she mm. doesn't. That probably means that Elise Villani is going to be, you know, sitting on the sidelines and doing a bit of fielding as twelfth. Um, obviously, she's going to be one of the disappointed ones there. But unfortunately, these don't come around very often and some people are going to be disappointed. The other question for Australia, I guess, is whether they throw in uh, Taylor Vlemick at the at the deep end. Um, and, you know, she's been uh, she's taken a few wickets um, in the in the warm up, hasn't she? Um, and um, according to people who were there, um, she was bowling quite fast and kind of making the England batsmen hop around a bit um, and is a bit of a, a bit of a wild card, I guess, somebody they haven't maybe seen very much of. Um, on the on the flip side of that, um, doesn't maybe look like it's going to be the kind of pitch that would be that would be friendly to her particularly. Yeah, Meg Lanning um, certainly said in the press conference that um, she appreciates that in Test cricket you can afford to I shouldn't quite say it like this, but you can afford to leak a few runs here and mm. there. Um, I don't think there's any doubt that Taylor Lanning will you know will be slightly more expensive than some of their other options. But as you say, she does provide that, you know, that wild card, that that little bit of pace that, you know, might hurry the batsman up and take a few surprise wickets. So I think she's she's got a good chance and certainly the Australian media seem to think that she's got a good chance of playing too. And just to go back to England for a minute, um, the other player that we haven't mentioned who's who's come into the squad for the first time is, is George Railwis. Um, and we actually said in our when we um, wrote the piece about the squad announcement, we said we think that she's likely to be in the in the first choice eleven. And and actually, uh, based on what Heather Knight's just said, I think she is going to play. I, I asked the question in the press conference. I said, "Why have you brought George Railwis in?" And she just said, "Well, she's a very calm presence. She's got great technique, uh, and she actually um, harked back to the last women's test." At at North Sydney when the two of them batted for most of the fourth day didn't they in order to actually hold out for a draw which was which was very important in the context of the series despite the fact that England then went on to lose it in the T20 leg but but holding on for that draw was very important and I do think that actually having a player who's got recent test experience and and who as as Heather Knight said is kind of calm and and perhaps knows a little bit more about the format than some of the other players could be quite crucial for England so so that's why we think she's likely to play.
Yeah, I think that Heather Knight unusually almost you know, gave away her thinking there. She's usually very good in the press conferences at keeping it very tight, but I think she did kind of basically say that Elvis was going to play, yes. Yeah, I, I think she did. Um, yeah, I was quite surprised by that. But there you go, candidness from Heather Knight. It's great. We welcome it. We'd, like, we'd love to see more of it. Um, OK, and um, obviously Adam Collins has already already tweeted um, that, uh, as, as we heard in the press conferences, um, it's going to be a used pitch. Um, it's a pitch that um, I believe um, a World Cup match was, was played on um, a few weeks ago. Um, and so that's a, that's an interesting choice, isn't it? Um, and um, Adam Collins kind of wasn't um, wasn't backward in coming forward, shall we say, on his on his on his views on that, and that he thinks that's really disappointing. And it's obviously going to be going to be a talking point, um, especially uh, based on what kind of happens over the next few days, I suppose. What do we think about that? Well, I think it, yeah, it's going to be it's certainly going to be a talking point yeah. because almost whatever happens, people are going to talk about the pitch as they have at the last two two matches. Um, so we asked Meg Lanning about the pitch when we spoke to her. Um, she said she thought it was actually a pretty good pitch. Mm. Um, you know, let's bear in mind the men's World Cup match was a 50-over match, not like they played in it for you know a four-day county championship match or something. Um, so she thinks it's going to be a reasonable pitch for the first couple of days, and then might you know take a bit of spin going forward in the last couple of days. Um, you know, it certainly doesn't seem to be one that you want to be batting on in on in the fourth innings is that is that fair to say well no that might be true it might be very useful to be bowling late on on it and if it's certainly if it's a pitch that's going to take spin um you know then i think that england if they play their most attacking spin option kirsty gordon then they'll be hopeful that you know they can use that to their advantage to get the win that they desperately need I actually think it was really interesting um, when Heather Knight was asked about this in the press conference and she was actually asked, you know, would you prefer a pitch um, that was more kind of that was bouncier and more conducive to, to pace bowling? And she said, no, what we really want is a pitch that's going to produce a result in four days. And actually the, the last test, yeah, OK, we had that great headline because of um, Elise Perry's double century. Uh, and it is exciting to some extent when you're fighting out for a draw. But really, we want the result and England want the result because they need to win. A draw isn't good enough this time around. Um, so is, is it possible that um, that the England camp slash Heather Knight, who obviously knows this, this part of the world and the groundsman here very well, has actually said to them, look, guys, can we play on a used pitch? Because we think that's the only way to win. Can we actually, can we beat Australia if, if, if they're batting on a road, which is the kind of pitch that we perhaps might normally see at Taunton yeah England obviously you know England don't w want the kind of pitch that we, they actually really enjoy playing on here last year in the T20 tri-series mm. which was a road where there were two world record scores mm. in in one day that were you know very few wickets were falling um, you know England need the opposite of that pitch they need the ante of that pitch they need you know that pitch but someone having stomped all over it for a day which is what they're getting so yeah I'm um, not necessarily convinced that if it does produce a result and, and an exciting match that it, that's necessarily a bad thing. Is that really terrible to say? No, I th well, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, obviously, you know, from the, the perspective of the people at Somerset, they want the game to last four days. I mean, mm. that's one of their big priorities yeah. um, because they, you know, they want the crowds to come in on the fourth day. Um, you know, and with the fourth day being the Sunday, that's going to be a good day for bringing people in, especially if it's, there's a promise of an exciting finish. So, you know, they certainly don't want to finish in a, in a day. But from England's perspective, in terms of the women's ashes, they need that result. So um, we know that England are obviously going to be approaching this in a, in a very attacking way. Uh, they, they need to win. From Australia's perspective, um, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because they're 6-0 up on points. Um, they don't necessarily need to win this match. How do we think Australia will be, will be approaching the next four days? Well, I mean, I think that it's very easy to say when you go into a test, oh, you know, we, 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 we play this game to win. Of course, they're going to say this play, they're going to play this game to win. I don't think there's any doubt that Australia will also play it not to lose to a certain extent. Uh, you know, then, then they're not going to go hell for leather and, and risk losing the game if they can avoid it. They're not stupid. Um, but I really liked what Elise Perry said um, the other day to us. Um, what she said was that um, it's important this match not just for the result in this women's ashes series but for women's test cricket as a whole elise was saying that what we want to do is to play more test cricket if we want to play more test cricket we've got to show that women's test cricket is viable that it can that it can produce a decent game that it can produce a decent contest that it can produce quality cricket um, and that's what they aim to do so elise was very much that the australians have a responsibility to the wider game and to being able to get themselves the more tests that they want to play um, in and to produce a good 
good game here. So um, I think that it's, it's pretty clear that Australians aren't going to be just going to attempt to grind it out for a board draw. They'll certainly, you know, be looking to at the outset to win the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, you know, if it comes to, you know, three o'clock on the last afternoon and they need to grind it out, they're going to grind it out. So are England, um, you know, because even though England would therefore lose the Ashes, they still would rather have a draw than a loss. Um, but I think that both sides are going to approach this reasonably positive. And I think that's good news for the cricket we're going to see over the next four days. Definitely. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's really important um, that both sides put on a good show and, and we'll certainly be hoping for that. Um, we'll be bringing you all the action from Taunton over the next four days um, and fingers crossed for a good game.